Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. What's up, y'all? Cheddar cheese in the place to be. Silver price report coming at ya. Bringing you the daily price of real, physical, silver. Got a few things to get into tonight. Let's do that price first. This is for May 11th, 2021. Priced in U.S. dollars. American Silver Eagle, $40.95. Canadian Maple Leaf, $35.56. Austrian Philharmonic, $33.76. Private Mint, $32.80. With an average price of about $35.95. Premium, $8.45 over spot. Slightly down on that average price. Not too bad. Hovering around that $36 range here over the last couple days. Premiums down too. Here goes this graph for uh, since the beginning of May. <coughs> Excuse me. So that slow, slowly creeping up comes down here just a little bit at the tail end. But if I could put the uh, the chart from April in front of this, you'd see it's just slowly creeping up. Definitely the tortoise in this race. So let's get into the drama, which is the silver soap opera. Seems like the LBNA, LBMA made a <clears throat> accounting error, which is quite interesting. We'll talk about that. Let me read this. <coughs> Gotta clear my throat. Have mercy, baby. Ha! I hope you don't mind. Let me clear my throat. All right. Karaoke this Friday. Let's get it. All right. The LBMA announced today that they made a small error in overstating its silver inventories last month. According to the press release, the LBMA recorded an additional 3,300 metric tons of silver in March. That turns out to be a bit more than 106 million ounces. That's half of the total global physical silver investment last year. So they made a mistake equivalent to half of the coins and shit sold last year. Now, if I understand this right, Chris Marcus pointed out, well, Chris Marcus over at Arcadia Economics has a great silver channel. He pointed out that the amount that they screwed up calculating, the amount that they overstated, <clears throat> is equal to the amount of silver that the SLV ETF claimed that it got or that it put under the market. This is from Bullion Star, Ronan Manley. Over the three-day period from Friday, 29th January to Tuesday, 2nd February, SLV claimed to have added an incredible 109.83 million ounces of silver. as 3,416.11 tons. The LBMA recorded an additional 3,300 metric tons of silver in March. So that's equivalent to the amount in... Uh, early, early, uh, early, fe- or, excuse me, early February. That's just interesting. I ain't saying it's no shit. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not saying shady shit is going on. But I'm um, not saying it ain't either. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. <laughs> uh, I'm. I cannot confirm nor deny if something shady is going on. It's just, you know, there's just interesting numbers, how they match up. The reason I say that is because uh, when the silver squeeze first popped off, people were wondering how in the hell did SLV, which is the JP Morgan ETF, how in the hell did they get all that silver? Where'd they get it from? Well, maybe it was just an accounting error. Who the frick knows? All right, let's get into this unemployment stuff. So, Jen Psaki, I think that's her name. I think that's how you say it. Press secretary has a back and forth over unemployment unemployment benefits and the labor shortage, which is going on. Let's play this. As Bank of America economists who are cited in a Bloomberg story say, anybody making less than $32,000 a year is better off financially just taking the unemployment benefits. So is the White House creating 
an incentive just to stay home. Well, again, uh, the majority of economists uh, internally and ex externally of the White House don't feel that unemployment insurance, something that was done um, at a time where to help unemployed people get through a very difficult economic downturn during a pandemic, is a, is the, a major driver in, uh, in our unemployment data. He didn't ask if it was a major driver. He just asked if it was an incentive. But he might have implied it, you know, in the first part of this. But data that there are other factors bigger factors that were contributing have been contributing to the numbers we saw on friday that's what we're working to address uh and that's where we think our solution should be focused okay so um what she mentioned was uh schools being closed you know lack of child care stopping people from going back to work i don't know Here's some news from Florida, but it's been open for a while. School's been open for a while down there. Although we're allowed to operate at 100% capacity in Florida, we can't find staff, Carol Dover, president and CEO of Florida Restaurant Lodging Association, said while testifying virtually April 13th in front of a U.S. Senate hearing on the pandemic's impact on tourism. Simply put, we're competing with state and federal unemployment benefits. Workers tell us that they make too much money on unemployment to return to work. So businesses are forced to limit capacity, shorten their hours with adequate staff to serve guests. Now I know in my state, I'm in Michigan. <clears throat> Schools are open. We got a labor problem. So I don't know if what Miss Pisaki here, what she's saying is, the right way to put it. Now, I'm not doubting that lack of child care and, and issues with schools and screwing people's schedule. I don't doubt that those are, aren't are contributing factors, but I tend to be in the camp that uh, no, I, think, I think the fact that government's the unemployment is essentially as good, if not better, or just a little bit worse um, than going to work. That's what's incentivizing people to stay home. So we'll see. Montana, I believe, and I think South Carolina just stopped distributing federal unemployment benefits. So it looks like I don't know what they're going to be doing with the money. I don't know what all that entails. So we'll see if their um, labor problem upticks. That'll be a indicator that what I'm saying is more so correct than what she's saying. We'll just have to see. Well, that's about it for tonight. I just ranted my ass off. Uh, went on little tangents. Took a stroll down tangent lane. All right. Well, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you can incorporate this into your analysis. Until tomorrow, peace out.